Some time ago, I was in Newport Beach, California, with an acquaintance of mine who was open air preaching, Scotty. Scotty had a heckler's box set up for a heckler to stand on, and on the box was a Muslim woman. This woman identified herself as a Muslim and was dressed in the, in the pr appropriate attire for a Muslim woman. And she was discussing with Scotty the gospel. Scotty was explaining to her what the gospel was, and she was rejecting it. And her reason for rejecting the gospel was because of the fact that in her mind, the Quran was accurate and the Bible was not. When she got done and was talking with Scotty, I walked over and approached her, asked her if I could share something with her. She said she had to go. She only had three minutes. So I asked her the question, if I could prove that the Quran cannot have been written by God in three minutes or less, would you be willing to listen? She told me I couldn't do such a thing, but agreed that she would listen. Now that's a tall order. Can I prove that the Quran cannot possibly be written by God in less than three minutes? Well, here's how the conversation went. I had explained to the woman that if the Quran was written by God, it must be 100% accurate and have no errors or contradictions. And I asked her, is that correct? And she said, yes. I asked her, can you define for me what the Quran in Surah chapter 5 defines as the Christian Trinity? And she accurately explained what the Quran teaches, that the Trinity is the Father, the Mother, and the Son. Now, any Christian knows that that is a wrong definition. And because it is a definition issue, in, the, in Surah chapter 5, defining it that way, you cannot have, by the law of non-contradiction, something have a different meaning in the same sense in the same way. And that's what we have here, because the Christian definition of the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, not the Mother. No Christian in history that's Orthodox has ever accepted that Mary was part of the Trinity. And so you have something that's very clearly a wrong definition. And I asked her, if the Christian definition is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and not the Father, Son, and Mother, do you see that that is a wrong definition, an error in its definition? And she said, well, yes, that would be. I said, let me give you one other. In the Quran, does it say that the Bible has been edited, corrected, or, or changed, corrupted in some way? And she said, yes, and that's why I don't hold to it. I said, but do you know, and I'm going to read what I read to her. This is out of the Quran. This is uh, one of the better English translations or accepted English translations. But I read to her Sarah chapter 6. Verse 34, rejected were the apostles before thee, with patience and consistency they bore their rejection and their wrongs until their aid did reach them. Th now listen, there is none that can alter the words and decrees of God. Already hath thou received some accounts of the apostles. So this passage and it further says the same later in that same surah in 115 but this one is very clearly speaking about those previous apostles referring to the Bible so here you have a problem and I said you have a problem within your own Quran the Quran says right here in the surah that the Bible cannot be changed and yet later it says it was changed either it cannot be changed or it can be changed but you cannot have that the Bible cannot be changed and changed in the same way at the same time. This is a violation of the law of non-contradiction. In these two ways I showed her that there are contradictions, clear contradictions in definitions of terms within the Quran. And within three minutes she turned to me and said, you're right, can I have your email address so I can continue corresponding with you? She realized that, and here was the reason I brought that out, because my concluding thing in the seconds that I had left with her, I said, listen, you rejected everything that my friend Scotty told you about what God, Jesus Christ, God himself did by dying on a cross on your behalf, because he died in your place and paid the penalty for you, so that you can be have forgiveness of sin. 
You rejected that because you trusted in the Quran. Now that you know that the Quran cannot have been written by God, will you at least give consideration to what Scotty was sharing with you? Will you at least consider that maybe God, what the Bible says, that God did die for you? He died in your place and paid the penalty of your sin, that you can have forgiveness, that God Almighty paid the eternal fine, so you who owe God an eternal fine, He paid it for you that you may be set free. Consider these things. And she said she would. And in just three minutes, was able to refute Islam, the trust in the Quran, and explain why the Bible makes sense. Because in the Bible we have forgiveness of sin. May you know that forgiveness today. And go out and strive to make today an eternal day for the glory of God.